christening the new YouTube channel for Blue Chip Scouting today is going to be myself, Andrew Harbaugh, rocking the North Dakota State shirt for a special reason, and my man, Tyler Fornis, who's rocking an all-elite, well, the elite wrestling shirt. Um, sorry, sorry, Harbs. It is the Golden Elite with Kota Ibushi to get your wrestling canon right. I will do better in the future with getting my wrestling stuff better and right and as well as my english which has just been awful day um as i said sight looking at something as s-i-t-e but we don't need to hear about my grammar uh carson wentz trade finally went down last week um let everything settle for a little bit no quick reactions no oh my gosh one way or another sort of thing kind of look back figure out all the parameters of it and kind of uh dig deep into it here with uh, Fornis, like I said. And I think the biggest thing we got to look at it is this was a messy situation. Eagles. And, and it got bad. And who. And you had went to already had locker room issues. Again, there's a lot of air quotes here. Um, and then you had Hertz, who is their second round pick, come in, become the starter towards the end of the year. Then you had the debacle with the quarterback situation for week 17 that let the uh, Washington football team get into the playoffs. How do you feel the Eagles handled this whole situation now that you don't have your former number two pick? You don't have your Super Bowl winning head coach. You're left with a uh, first time head coach uh, coming over from the Colts, ironically. Um, and then you have. Of Howie Roseman, who's still there somehow to my dismay, and of course Jeffrey Lurie, who's in his castle watching all this chaos. Honestly, I think it this it all boils down to you can't blame Howie Roseman for this because he shouldn't even have his job. It, Jeffrey Lurie needs to stop spending so much time with Meek Mill, and he needs to focus on running his football team. Howie <laughs> Roseman has dug this team a massive grave, and now they're lying in it. They had a perfect storm. They had the rookie quarterback on the contract, and he led them to a fantastic record, got hurt. They struck magic in a bottle with Nick Foles, and they mismanaged that situation. They kept Foles when, in reality, they should have traded one of them immediately. And Carson Wentz it just kind of deteriorated. They didn't put a good offensive line in front of him. They did not get good weapons around him. At the end of the day, he was throwing to Greg Ward Jr. and Travis Fulgham. They're fine players, but they, you want them as your wide receiver three, wide receiver four options, not your wide receivers one and two. Uh, and just the gross misconduct with the cap and how it was mismanaged. The fact that Roseman still has a job is beyond me. The only thing it makes me think of is he must have the relationship with Lori that Tom Brady has with uh, Robert Kraft. That uh, Roseman must just be uh, thought of as, by Lori as a son. And it's just atrocious. Eagles fans should be just dismayed on how this whole situation was handled. Bleach Report broke today that apparently they went weeks without talking. Speaking of Carson Wentz and Doug Peterson, yeah. your head coach spent weeks not talking to your starting quarterback. What your is going on? Coach, coach yeah. went 10 weeks without starting to, or talking to a quarterback. And I think we can uh, uh, let Chip Kelly take a little bit of a victory lap. He realized after one year with Howie Roseman that Roseman yep. needed to go. And he took over. And you can really rip Chip Kelly a new one for how he built that team. But at the end of the day, he understood and identified early on that Howie Roseman was a cancer as far as how to construct a winning football team and how to build this, this roster and how to manage personalities in the building. And... Nobody else has seemed to figure that out inside the organization, and that's why he's still there. And I think what's crazy to me, too, is like we're talking about a Super Bowl winning GM. Like, there's not a lot of those. Um, yeah, there's people in the front office and so on that have won Super Bowls across the league, but mm -hmm. I mean, he constructed that team. You had Nick Foles as the backup when Wentz went down during what was going to be an MVP year. And it's kind of like he just, from that point on, just forgot team building. Like, I saw a tweet today that said, uh, from 2016 to 2017 is exactly how you build a roster for a quarterback to be taken first or second overall. And then from 2018 to present is how the opposite way to do it. Like, nothing's been maintained. Like, you talked about the crazy contracts. Um, it's just like Atlanta down in – the NFC South there with Matt Ryan, 
his contract's super messy. Thomas Dimitrov doesn't have a job anymore because of the contracts he was just handing out. And the Eagles are in a pretty bad cap situation because they let themselves get to that point. Um, not because the cap's real, of course. And mm-hmm. um, it's just one of those things where it leaves me to think where I think even with this being his son, as you said, um, is this Howie Roseman's last chance? Like this experiment for this year with Jalen Hurts and everything, is he tied to Jalen Hurts' success? I don't think he's tied to Jalen Hurts' success because if he was really tied to a quarterback success, it would have been Carson Wentz. They mortgaged everything to go get him, and you know what? It worked out. But at the end of the day, it feels like Howie Roseman struck lightning in a bottle, and you could have said the same with Ryan Pace. Ryan Pace traded the farm to get Khalil Mack, and it made an incredible impact on that team in 2018. If Mitch Trubisky hits, like we're talking about the uh, Bears having a dynasty potentially with how loaded that defense is, how good some of those offensive weapons were, and Matt Nagy as a overall offensive mind, but Trubisky was just a massive liability, and it really hindered what that team could become. And I think if the fortunes change for Ryan Pace, you're talking about a whole new narrative. And Howie Roseman, I think, is riding off the coattails of those 2016, 2017 years where he really built that team. He was able to dump Sam Bradford on on a desperate Minnesota Vikings team who thought they were literally going to make a Super Bowl run in 2016 before Teddy almost lost his leg. And they were able to get a first and a fourth round pick for him, really helped build that team. And they got Derek Barnett, who was a key contributor in that Super Bowl run. And that was a, a pick that they had given up to the Tennessee Titans so they could go out and get Carson Wentz. And I think if Roseman, I think he's probably going to get two more years because I don't think with how everything is structured this year, the ownership knows that they kept going all in to try and get things done to make another Super Bowl run. And I think because you have to take that massive step back, he's getting an opportunity to do another build. And I think it's going to take at least two years to figure out if it's going in any kind of right direction. I really have no hope in Howie Roseman or what the Eagles are doing. Just ask Jalen Rager last year. Hey, yeah. Mike, what's up? How's Justin Jefferson looking? Uh, <laughs> other than that, like, it's tough because uh, you took Jalen Rager, who was bleh. He doesn't know how to catch the football. And then you took Jalen Hurts when you have Carson Wentz. You just paid 30 plus million dollars a year to. It's clear to me he just doesn't know what he's doing. And it sucks for Philly fans because they're one of the most, even though they are vulgar and a lot of them are just downright mean and nasty, they are one of the most passionate fan bases in the entire world. Philadelphia fans are crazy passionate for their teams and they don't deserve this. Yeah, and it's funny because I can appreciate that as a Browns fan where like the dog pound's not a fun place if you're a Steelers fan or a, a Make-A-Wish kid in a Jets uniform, unfortunately. Um, or Santa Claus. Or Santa Well, Santa Claus, yeah, for the Philadelphia fans, if yeah. you're Santa Claus. Um, heck, even our former governor, Ed Randell, said he threw snowballs at Santa Claus during – he was at that game. Um, but I feel like that's another one of those things that Eagles fans just claim to be at. Um, but – the thing I think that we need to look at too, just to flip hand, uh, sides here, Chris Ballard. I would I would make the case he's the best general manager in the league as far as building a roster. He doesn't have a Super Bowl yet, but I, I feel like just how he handles the draft and how he handles trades and how he handles just overall team building. I, I if I had one GM in the league, I would pick him at this point. Um, and with that, do you think that he fleeced Howie Roseman and the Eagles? Or do you think it's a pretty even trade? I'll be honest. I think it was a pretty fair trade for both sides. Uh, Obviously, with the Eagles situation, it was obvious Carson Wentz wanted out. He didn't want to play there anymore. And it it just felt like when you watch the film that Carson Wentz wasn't going to succeed in Philadelphia anymore. And it was just time. It was time to move on. Really unfortunate considering they put in all that investment and capital into him. And they gave him the big contract. And they're eating a record $33.6 in dead cap this year. That's really tough to swallow. But when you get a third round pick and at minimum a second round pick as well with the opportunity for it to be a first, if they get a first and a third, that's essentially what the Lions got for Matthew Stafford. And I think it's fair to say that Matthew Stafford is a much better quarterback right now than Carson Wentz. So if you're getting almost equal compensation to the Matt Stafford trade, I think that's a big win for the Eagles. And for the Colts, if it ends up hitting 
where you get a really good quarterback to pair with that roster, that offensive line, and how Chris Ballard handles contracts, builds the team, drafts incredibly well, and you have first and second round picks this year, which I think was really important to Chris Ballard's vision of how he wants to continue to potentially make a Super Bowl run this season. I think it's a win-win for both sides. And if Carson Wentz fails, they didn't give up the farm to go get him, and they're still in a really good position where they can continue to build. It's essentially a two-year guaranteed contract. They can get out of it if they need to. The Eagles paid so much money up front, it's relatively friendly for the Indianapolis Colts. And I think that's one of the reasons why Ballard is such a smart GM. He's taking a risk, but it's calculated. Frank Reich knows everything you could want to know about Carson Wentz from his time in Philadelphia. You could argue that Carson Wentz was never better than when Frank Reich was his offensive coordinator. So he's not going in blind. He's going to be playing indoors, which I think is good for any quarterback. Like you can argue, oh, this guy's just meant to play in the cold. Like Brett Favre was in Green Bay. But you know what? Every quarterback is better when the elements aren't a factor. And I think that's going to benefit Carson Wentz. Yeah, no, he, he thrived in the Fargo Dome in North Dakota State. Or Saw him play live. He, is, he was really fun. They didn't have a ton of great weapons around him. But right. that offense was a lot of fun to watch, and they calculated a lot of really good deep shots that Carson Wentz hit consistently. Yeah, and I think that's going to be a big thing too is um, he's going to have an offensive line now. Like, and, and all due respect to Lane Johnson and Jason Peters and all of them, but they were so beat up all the time. Mm-hmm. And Jason Kelsey, um, they're all getting up there. and They're all getting, like I said, the injuries are just really plaguing them. And then you talked about it, Howie, Howie Roseman. Who knows? Drafting Justin Jefferson instead of Jalen Rager, who knows where both their careers project after that or traject. Um, mm-hmm. And then maybe Zach Ertz is healthy next, last year too. And imagine having a Justin Jefferson, a Zach Ertz, a Miles Sanders, um, all healthy offensive line. I mean, you would think on paper that's one of the best offenses in the league. Now you move to Indianapolis and you have Braden Smith. You have Quentin Nelson, the Um, Mm All-Pro. Unfortunately, Anthony Costanzo retires, so you have that hole at left tackle, um, which I'm sure Ballard's going to address in the first or second Mm -hmm. round with this tackle class. Um, So I guess even with T.Y. Hilton being a free agent, you still have Michael Pittman there. Uh, What are your expectations for Wentz in Indy? I think at this point, uh, you have to consider him an equal, if not greater, uh, than Phillip Rivers was last year. You have a running back in Jonathan Taylor who's got a year under his belt. He's going to understand the speed of the game a lot more and understand how to be a really good running back. You have another year of cohesion with that offensive line. I think uh, with the the, e, uh, the Colts, you have to win the AFC South this year. That Those are your expectations right now. You have to win the AFC South. You have to get a top two seed. And honestly, you got to make at least the divisional round and probably the AFC title game. This is what this team is. It's built to win right now. You're going to have to pay Quentin Nelson and Darius Leonard like starting this year or next year. You got to take that window and smash it right yep. now. And it, this it's do or die for Carson Wentz. It's a little unfortunate that he's in this kind of stressful situation right now, but this is the National Football League. This is big boy time. And Carson Wentz, he's played big boy football, and he needs to figure out how to do it again. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think today on Get Up on ESPN, there was there's a lot of interesting things said as we talked about. Mm-hmm. But one of them was Ryan Clark had the Colts as the fifth best team in the AFC. He had them behind Baltimore, uh, Kansas City, obviously Buffalo and Cleveland. And I really think they could take a step over Baltimore. Um, and who knows where Cleveland's going to be? I, I, I'm realistic as far as that goes. They, this year could have been a, a Haley's Comet of sorts. Knowing um, Kevin Stefanski, it's not. I, I, that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm hoping. But, um, no, I, I totally think the expectations for Wentz um, – I'm not going to go Dan Orlovsky and say he's going to be an MVP candidate right away. Um, but I I really think – you saw what Phillip Rivers was that last year in Los Angeles – well, San Diego and Los Angeles. And – it, it wasn't it. We all thought he was done. He looked like he was just done. Like just, we talked about NFL draft scout, um, Matt Miller tweeting out before the season that he was done. And it mm-hmm. was CCS, uh, Dan Barnes's routine and ants 
uh, Anthiorio's routine to tag him every week as Philip Rivers just proved the doubters wrong again and again and again um, and led them to an 11 win season. I, I think they could do the same thing with Wentz. I think with Jonathan Taylor, I think that's got to be your workhorse. You've got to do the Wisconsin game plan, take the ball out of Wentz's hands, let him get a year of not being shell shocked by the abuse that he received last year and the years before in Philly. And I really think that you can have something special happen there. Um, See, I, I disagree, Harbs, and uh, I want to comment on this real quick. Yeah, go I ahead. don't think I don't think you should shelter Carson Wentz at all. Like I said earlier, this is big boy time, and yeah. he's he's a grown man. He's an adult. He's in a completely new organization, but it's not a completely new offense. Frank Reich is still running this offense, and he understands it. You, you're an NFL football player. You need to go in, look, learn the playbook, get used to your teammates. You need to go out and ball right away. There is no get some time, get your feet wet. They're going to have mini camps this offseason. They're going to have training camp. They're going to ha- probably have a preseason. No excuses. You need to go out there and play. And I don't think we should be uh, letting him get his feet wet. Yeah, he's a he's going to be a sixth year NFL quarterback. It's time, pony up. Fornis taking that Midwestern dad, throw him on the hockey rink at two years old approach. I see. So hey, you well, know what? In Minnesota, that is a real thing. You teach I, I, know. Young I was going to say swimming how pool. To skate. I was going to say swimming pool, but I was like, ah, we'll go the hockey way with the Minnesota ties. So. Mm-hmm. Um, there'll be more of these coming out. We're, like I said, we're christening the new YouTube channel here. Um, plenty of fun stuff planned for you guys through the draft year. And, um, you won't be the last time you'll be seeing us. So until next time, we'll see you.